All right, hello and welcome to our second installment of these wonderful chats that uh, listen to me act like we've been having them forever. Look, the last one we had last week was so good that it does pretty much feel like we've been having these forever. Such important discussions that we need to have, you know, last week all about owning your fears, the transformation with your body, when you decide that you're gonna change your body and how you're gonna keep it that way, you know, all depending on, you know, the mental state that you were at when you were deciding that this is it, you're not gonna look like this any longer. Sorry, I'm just adjusting my screen here. But today the conversation is even more important because this is easily the biggest responsibility that you know most people on earth are going to be placed with and that is being a parent and more specifically parenting during the times of COVID-19. First woman and 97% these uh, conversations are so important to have um, and also you know we, we, in this wave where we think that COVID-19 is ending uh, you know so it's important to kind of you know, recheck ourselves, you know, check the review mirror and see where were we in March, where were we in April, where were we in August, and now in September, where are we, and ultimately, where are we going to be in December with our families and our kids? When COVID-19 came, I think there were just many things that within lockdown that we were concerned about, like, how am I going to keep off the weight? You know, how am I going to keep my job? And if you didn't have a job, you're asking yourself, how am I going to get a job? If you were in a relationship, how are you going to keep this relationship going? If you were single, like, how am I going to get into a relationship if I can't go anywhere and meet anyone? Mental state, anxiety, things that you were wondering about. And then obviously COVID-19, health and safety. I mean, it's... it's the pandemic itself is, was all about threatening, you know, the health and safety of our families. But all of this, you know, was uh, under the umbrella of motherhood. How did we as mothers do uh, within COVID-19? And the one question I want to ask all the mothers that are going to be on the panel this afternoon is, when we get over this, and I'm quite optimistic, I'm, 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 I truly believe that, you know, this is something that we're going to get over and we're going to conquer because other challenges are coming. So this one can't stick around forever. That's how life goes. You know, newer, newer challenges always come in. When we are done with this and, you know, we've changed our lives and we've adapted and that word that everybody's used, we've pivoted. What do you want to retain in the routine that you came up with? Uh, you know, your survival during COVID-19. Surely you changed a lot of things. You know, maybe your kids are now going to homeschool forever because you found that it worked for you. When we are done and dusted with this, what do you want to keep? And the panel today, when First Woman said to me, just talk to mothers and let's just kind of find out where we are with this COVID-19. I had to think to myself, well, I belong to a very strong group of women. Um, you know, we call ourselves book club and uh, going on 15 years as friends. And in this, in this group, there are many mothers and I had to call on three of them because I, I, I really look at the way they parent. I'm like, like what they do, you know, it's not about perfection, it's just about consistency and sharing because every time they trip, they shave like, hey, that's where I went wrong, don't go wrong there. So my friends, Matafe, uh, Violet, as well as Rose are gonna be joining us at the end of the session. Cannot wait for you to meet them. Wonderful ladies, you might just steal them from me. They, they like my besties, but you might steal them. And then another mother who had double lockdown because not only was she in lockdown with the rest of the world, she then got locked down in America. She literally got stuck in America, guys. Uh, Murake friend of mine in the industry has become a, a, like you know like this industry friends like hey hey we see each other at events but to me uh like i see her all the time love her i need to talk to her uh, her and her husband and the three kids were locked down in a new york and then they flew off to virginia it was a lot uh Jimmy Murake is gonna join us as well but then there is a mother from the western cape she she rose to fame by being a, a mom, 22 year old mom that gave birth to quadruplets. Uh, this was a, just under two years ago. So I thought to myself, we need to catch up with her. I mean, lockdown with just so many children. Sadly, she did lose one of them. Uh, th these are all things. Uh, uh, these are all things that we're going to discuss with you. Inga, welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> All kids, same age uh, during lockdown. I need to know, how did you cope? I'm not coping, but <laughs> I'm not coping, Shem, because every day, struggle is each other. discover a new thing. If we change it, I find that I use it. And it's not a good thing. So, as Baba Kula, Baba Bonda, 
u inga ngo mama no mnyo ufuno patu inga ngo mama lo na ngo makulu ai singo mama u mama ngo inga so ufuno patu ngo inga kengo so and copy shame I'm not coping but in diaza ma kengenze kwe kwenze. But okay, Inga, when did you get to a point where you can be honest that you're not coping? Because I think as mothers, Nyani, we really try like to act like we've got it all together. Ne? Yo! We like to act like we've got it all together, but when you can be honest uh, and say, I'm not coping, and uh, say, when was that realization by Ufne Kube Oni? The realization was before he locked down, ne? The bands are the pangel, ne? So nda ye kupange ila nda fokasa e skolin. Ben funda npange. So yeah. esku nda ye kupange ila nda nda shale nlini. And then two weeks after nda shale nlini. Kota nubana there's lockdown, COVID-19, wada wada. So iskola na so kwa funega sifunde le nlini. Nlini yeah. angwa zo funda. Angwa zo funda nlini. Kozi silapa songe. Kwa nkala yu bambi ngwati. Inga safa na mdi nti bambi ngwati. Ya kazu ulwa ifo un, ifo ndifunda kuyo ndi, ndi ya skura la tru kutwa sapa nifunu fota ya bo. So, mm-hmm. ankwazo funda. Ne? So, elenge wogu, emini kabelele. I, by three months, ne? Two girls and a boy. Aba, 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 shikle. So, kwa i girls is lele, uputia na galali. Ne? So, mm-hmm. mna, benzo tene, emini kabelele na mdi ya lala. But anguaz, cause the kind of lala uputi, which is the one that in lala. Why in the lala? It girls is ya vuk. It girls, why na ya ngozi vugile? Inga masamba siyo lala. Yabo. Who is helping you? Because I heard you speak about a grandmother, so obviously she's helping you. But outside of that, mm. do you have any other help? No, no, no. Are you going? Nini kwa? Sit, sit here, and then you know sister wam, oza even wam, eh. So Inga, school and you were studying IT, ne? Yeah, I'm still st- studying IT. So you are still studying it. So you, you, mm. during that time, you didn't decide, I suka, I'm wasting time here. Let me drop out and try again next year. Yo, and so kwa za sana final year. Funega and the a show. The jungle like the biggest pre project. Eh, eh, so kazba Inga, you are doing this. We are we are graduate. So funega and the a law project. So I'm going to be in the end. So basically, I mean, because you're doing this for your kids, you want to get an education mm. so you can get a job for your kids. So the very yeah. people that you're doing it for, they're the ones that... Gaba. Yes. Yes. It, it's really bittersweet. So, <laughs> okay. Because here's another thing. During lockdown, well, whom do we have these luxuries? But no, uh, you know, homeschool, do this, get help, uh, stay at home. Guys, let's be... How difficult was it for you to be actually stay at home? Because uh, uh. like what challenges, even financially, did you face mm-hmm. in, uh, during lockdown as a mother? Um, ne, I lost an income mostly because I But mm-hmm. luckily, in UKFM, the radio station, uh-huh. ne. So, usi silona o o dilanati lo we pasaris. That's it. Hana yenda mkwela is struggle and then what the site ba bona as a company ba zunika is i monthly stipend for ba sikwazi u get around a few things. So, at least i stipend plus i malia wei grant. I yas nga da suwa sikwazi ufumana the basics. A wuko nzi maba city 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 hai siya kakaza. Mubu nzi manje obu general. Not about city, 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 about you, Basela Manzi, in Dresden Jal. Yeah, Ziva, you are even, you are sensitizing yourself to Wunzima, Wunzima, Jobu General. Like, <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I watched your one interview and you said that in one uh-huh. week you used 96 nappies. Aha, uh-huh. exactly. So, Ngenyanga, and then, ne, Abantu, ne, by three, ne, Jenga by three, ne. But the side of Bona, as I be skin to a very sensitive. In the time, this other seven is a E forty five, and then in a pen, it's cheaper than phone because the bag of a limp on the baby bones by Yawk. So for the end of Shoba, hike is gold two packets a month. Umdunga, I'm your young born. Because you can get sponsored, you can get help, but there are just some things that Fneke was mailing and I are Langi. Exactly. Mm, in jail. What, what, if, if I could give you all the money in the world, Inga, what luxuries would you afford yourself and ultimately your kids? Inlo. Inlo. Yes, inlo. First priority, inlo. Because, Lea, inlo, a salakuyo yim, 
RDP house ne and then si a rent ne and then joba si rent it's like 2 years ngo kusiza mo ithenga but into zika city of cape town ne into the subsidies ya jikeleza ne so si yakhuleke ka si rent and then is space sabo for ba badlale as as enough and then indlu lehlala kuyo isecaleni kweyendlela so aba kwazi uphuma phandle badlale and all that cause ikhona imoto isecaleni kweyendlela ma so kudlula itax and all that aya so first thing would be a house and inside lockdown obviously rules are changed there were new things let me change layo in how you run your life what would you like to keep come okay yaz ndoni kwakunzima ne uba sibe lockdown but this list that i've learned inside lockdown is something that i really wanna kubeke ngayo and keep on doing it um and it's it kana si si sense is not before ne bebe ne schedule because bahlala noma khulu makhulu akazobe elibele ilonto yabo ne and then ngoku ndim ngumama wabo mna ndiyatatamisa ndiyateketisa so ndifunda ubana manje ba mamele if bathi ndibana asifuna ipapa sikhale lisonka ndibani ke sonka esi basikhale layo njengabani ke ipapa because because I circle, I circle and because the house gabone. So you and then you Bawa demand because bawa has bawa loan and makulu makulu doesn't take shit and then loan and inga if we inga aga 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 funi this is lila we inga try and lila yon the has bawa usan roy so I call choice man then they lend over funi but inga mm-hmm. and I mean you know I, I I understand that you don't have a choice you have to be fine because you've got three kids mm-hmm. but when you gave birth you gave birth to quadruple so by four mm-hmm. said salute uh-huh. so one. Obviously, uh-huh. every now and then we are going to send a lot of aircon. But uh-huh. know, then now I'm sure man will say, I can't be sad because I must be strong for our life. <laughs> but there's a moment when they do come and you said about who, 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 who passed uh-huh. away. What do you do? How do you adjust the country and bow boy? Um, there is a little land, a shale party, and then it triggers. It never speaks like daily, ne? Because uh cause ah baba koyo baya tando chacha and then there's a picture of him at the so baya tata nga yelo upudu wa abone yeah so it's a figure every day is only it because at least I have something to live on still, so I go with that bed. Yeah. But I'm also glad Beteta Ngaye because it means that because the Kumbula U city, you know, u u omye u chama, ubukule u chama, you know, omye u u active, omye u quiet, but the the one that passed away was all of them collectively so yeah. i'm sure each of them we can't and end up with um jong um kumbul um dana kono kone uh and then he he characters that was wrong every day they change on that in a plan jungle no babbling i'm so gom your babbling i say a lot so yeah he's here ah see i really really wish you all the best and yani like this is why i was like and if you know teta now i need to bring you onto this platform because you know, Abaya and Mama will think that they know what doing well. You know they are, but you own it. And like you said, I'm not coping, but I'm here. And you know, they are coping and Abaya and Mama are but you can and you don't want Mama because you never know how it will be. Abaya and Mama. Kunyanza leki le. Eh, enko sini sisi kafun. Okay, sisi ni avule na. Masha lose Mama le zaman di please and you can and you buses ni zin no plan kalle la ne. Okay, stop. Okay, enko sta kuli enga. Oh man, yeah. you see what I'm saying is that all our stories are just so different and but ultimately they all end up at the same destination and the fact that we are just mothers. Now to me, Morake. Hey madam. And mute yourself. Babe, are you still I'm in the <laughs> Are you still in the States? I'm still in the States. Uh I'm in Herndon, Virginia. Going strong. <laughs> Is it not seven months now that you've been in the States? 
is it? I'm actually, I don't know. I just feel like I'm here. <laughs> We've been here since oh. the beginning of March. So April, May, June, July, August, September, six months. Yes, almost seven months here. Six months we've been here. Wow, yes. And I just, just to clarify to people, this is not a sponsored trip. You, <laughs> you're paying for all of this. Hashtag tag your blesser. No, I'm not tagging any blessers here. <laughs> it's a very expensive five people trip. <laughs> Initially, you and your family, so you and your husband Umpo were going f- for work, right? Yes, a mix of work and pleasure for two months. It was a two month maximum trip. We were like, listen, we'll be in here for a month, but we've got some business that might need us to stay longer. So at the most, worst case scenario, we had gone ah, maybe two months at the worst. So when does it hit you that you are not going home? So COVID hit us about three weeks into our trip here. Like hit us as in when we were saying, but America, you know, you're in trouble and everybody around us is living like there's nothing wrong. And then after three weeks, everybody's going, oh, actually there's a problem. (laughs) And so for the first month, um, I was still in the budget month that, you know, that, oh, in case anything happens. So I was still fine. I think it hit me when now June was like proper sniffing at us biting yeah. at our toes and I went we're still here not only are we still here nothing is telling me it's getting better um mm-hmm. because now I was doing this breakfast show that I do right on on on, on the trading FM and um I'm unfortunately having to absorb a lot of news and I'm having to read a lot of news so yeah. I'm everything I'm reading is telling me to me y'all ain't going nowhere and they are jumping on a repatriation flight right now and I was like but I'm gonna r- force my asthmatic children and my asthmatic husband onto a flight with doctors who are still doing guesswork and fly to a country that's in level five lockdown. I was like, no, I can't. I'm, we're actually going to stay put. We are comfortable where, you, where we are. Because even the move from New York was a panic move in many ways because we were in an apartment, you know, we're enjoying the independence in Manhattan. It was amazing. But flat life and my three children who are used yeah. to a big yard and noise yeah. and, and, and fritom, uh, suddenly had to be restricted. Already you could see it happening in um, the apartment. You know, you can't go to the laundromat. You now can't access the park anymore. And I was going, this is becoming crazy. My children are going to have cabin fever. I'm going to have cabin fever. We can do better. And so we, we, like literally about two hours before the lockdown kicked in in New York, we yeah. literally just jumped into this car. We hired this huge car. Thank God for American, it's huge cars packed everything and drove for four hours to Virginia uh, because I said to him Paul you know the big thing for me is if we are in a space where the kids can go outside because we can't go anywhere else but at least if we can send them outside to breathe that'll make me happy and luckily uh, in Virginia Mm -hmm. it's also quite a I think it's largely anti-Trump so people are using their brains and they're using their senses and people were really socially distancing on on, on a serious level and so I felt much better but we arrived here and we quarantined um, for two weeks. You know, uh, we lived in with Virginia. A of... Hey, who's in Virginia? Why did you pick? So Virginia? in Virginia is Impost Uncle. It's Impost oh. Uncle. Um, okay. And so I was like, yeah, it's fine. And you know, as women, Anela, you need your space, especially at a time like this, you need your space. Yeah. So, but I was like, I would rather be with family and know that. Uh, my kids are not going to be feeling suffocated because really they're loud, bro. I was already <laughs> in that apartment. I was always just minging, waiting for a neighbor to complain. So, um, but also arriving here, uh, I realized as well that, okay, my kids are in school in South Africa. Part of the reason we couldn't stay for too long is with the arrangement we made with the school was we had the schoolwork to cover that time we'd be away. And now we have finished that. And yeah. the school is now going into virtual learning and whatever, but the time difference is killing us. My kids are waking up at two and three in the morning because they're soldiers. They want to see their teachers. They want to see their friends. And now I'm starting to lose my mind because I'm going, but this can't be a thing, guys. This can't be a thing. We can't be trying to put you to bed at 3 p.m. so that you can be up properly at like two in the morning to, to be but in school in South Africa. I read that in April, you struggled to get out of bed. Do you think that you were, you know, looking depression in, in the face there? No, I was proper depressed. I don't, listen, I, I have been on antidepressants before. So I, I know when I'm not in a good space. 
Mm. And the minute I couldn't get out of bed anymore, I was like, okay, something needs to shift. And it's that thing. You start skipping baths, you know. Mm. Um, and it's worse when you're a mother who has children who can prepare their own breakfast. Their pressure is even lessened now because, you know, they can come and bother you. You just tell them, go to the fridge and leave me alone, you know. Yeah. Um, and now your, your partner, if you're lucky enough to have a partner is picking up all the slack, but he's also taking strain. And one of the things that forced me out of bed was, you know, I had so many friends reach out cause you know, I'm always the, the happy maker when, yeah. when we get together. And yeah. so I had many friends calling me and I'm like, Hey, and they're like, stop it, stop, stop, stop. And then they would just talk and I would break down and I'd realize, okay, Gotcha, gotcha. I'm in trouble here because I am scared. I am now realizing I don't know what this means. I'm scared for my husband. I'm scared for my kids. You know, because you read the conflicting things. One minute they're going, no, kids are fine. They're, they're resilient. Um, this COVID thing, because their lungs are developed, won't take up. Then you're like, but they're asthmatic and this thing attacks the lungs. So everything you're saying to me makes no sense to me. You know what I mean? Um, one of them actually developed a fever. And we isolated him from the rest of the kids. And this is the one who actually isn't asthmatic. But the yeah. minute there was that fever, I was like, ah, you're staying away from the asthmatics because we don't know what this is. We don't know if, you know, like I said, we live with essential workers if anything happened. Yeah. And it's just that stress. Then kids want things to do. They get bored. They, you also don't want to give them too much TV time. I mean, we arrived here with very clear rules. You don't do more than 30 minutes of TV uh, midweek oh. and over the weekend. Oh, really? And now where's that rule? Now, where? Listen. <laughs> because you're like, well, what alternative am I about to offer you? Because we've done the painting. Yeah. Now we're painting on people's walls because then the paper becomes boring. Um, and but how much news do you allow your kids to, to, to absorb, you know, in general? And then also in a time like this, because I was also reading articles that say, you know, even as adults, you must just don't watch the news. Give yourself like a week break or tw just switch off. So when it comes to the kids, you know, did you allow them to, to watch? And, oh, Italy is going through this. France is going through this. You know, 300,000 people in America have already died. Like, you know, where, where are you protecting them from all this information? Yeah, I, I fought that battle as long as I could. But my firstborn, unfortunately, he, he, he needs to know what's going on. He's one of those kids... Um, I'll give you an example. When he had the car accident, the thing that got him to get past the trauma was being told facts. You need to tell him facts. You need to tell him what's happened and how it's happened. And I kid you not, that's what calms him down. None of this reassuring nonsense of, oh boy, boy, it's going to be fine. So yeah. he insisted on knowing what's going on. Because we'd tell him and be like, yeah, but I want to see, I want to see. And Black Lives Matter was happening. And the name George Floyd kept coming up. And so now I've brought my children to America and they are hearing as future Black men that this is the situation here. So I tried to shield them and then I realized I'm shielding until when? So that they can go and be shocked themselves when they step outside and there's an incident. So we have only allowed them to now watch news if we are there. We've made it very clear. You are not watching the news if we are not there because we need to know what you've seen so we can debrief it. You cannot mm. be sitting with things and then I don't know what you're concluding. So mm. right now, if literally, if I give you Bonsu, he can discuss Trump and politics and Biden and who's doing how in the elections right now. Um, mm. <laughs> and um, he's less scared of COVID. I'm very grateful for that. Mm. And just in terms of Black Lives Matter, you know, he's... Um, He's still following, he's asking me what's happening, you know, do I really still want to live in America? He misses South Africa. But yeah, uh, the short answer is I, I don't keep them away from the news, but yeah. I, the only rule now that we've made is if we're not around, you're not allowed to watch. But with the younger ones, I, I don't care. Like they still think the firstborn is the favorite because I'm like, you're not watching news, guys. You're not watching news. So, we, I mean, we're speaking about, you know, relationships and how your friends would call you and tell you, stop, stop it, uh, calm yourself down. Yeah, not okay. Mm. Yeah. So let's, I want to go to the relationship with your husband now, because initially you're like, woo, we're in the States, sex, in the States. living our best life. <laughs> and then, and then you're like, okay, we're in the States, sex in the States. <laughs> so like, how, how has your guys lockdown relationship been like, right? Because you know, you guys have made it through the best of times and the worst of times. And so yeah. this past six months, where would you file that? Is it the best of times, worst of times, when? Oh, your face. <laughs> it was like moving in with him for the first time. You know when you're learning someone, you're like, I do, Jeff. Like, <laughs> you. 
Um, you have to understand, my husband and I have never had to live together for a long period of time throughout our dating and our marriage. At yeah. some point, there's always someone who's away. We, there's always breathing involved. Mm. We've been in each other's faces and the roles have also been lopsided a lot of the times. And, and that can create serious tension where yeah. there'll be times I literally am unable to be present with the children at all because, you know, our earning is limited. And so when I'm working, I need to focus in. When he's working, he needs to focus in. And so for a lot of the time, this was the man who suddenly had to become the mother as well. But then also a mother me because there I am going through my little spell of depression. And, yeah. and so it, 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 did, it, it caused such strain it caused such strain and it's so weird like we communicate bruh we, we we i really think when it comes to communication we do really well but in this pandemic that also fell away somehow and i think it's because we were both afraid on so many on different levels and we were not expressing it to each other until things came to a head and we we're having fights that made no sense on a very regular basis yeah and yeah. then i was like okay we're going for a drive we're going for a drive going to speak to uncle we're leaving the kids in the house we're going for a drive and we went for a drive and we had a very honest conversation and and you know men i know we can allow them to be men and say uh they don't express themselves it's fine that's how they handle things but sometimes we have to put them in the corner where they're going to express themselves mm. and so we did that and we each got to break down and that meant so much to me because also it made me feel like, okay, I'm not being a baby. You are feeling what I'm feeling. I'm just watching you put one foot in front of the other because we have to be there for the kids. But I need you to know that I need to feel like you trust me enough to fall into my arms and be weak and say you can't because mm. that's also okay. Then I'll feel like, okay, so I'm not a weakling. This is a thing that's real for everyone. Um, so it's this, this pandemic, pandemic has been very important for us because it made me realize for couples, this is the time to make you or break you. And if there's one thing in point, I have proven time and time again, and especially during COVID-19 is we are great together. We even greater uh, together when things are good, but we even greater together when things are bad. We really oh. not have each other's backs, you know? Um, but I really think couples should talk to each other. And, and even Klof Klof, like you literally have to go all this time, we're stuck with the kids and you need an alone time and whatever. Ladies, you need to remember those kids are there because they're your boyfriend. And especially in this really tough time where you're busy worrying about everybody else, remember yeah. that that relationship as well needs nurturing. But the most person, important person is you, Anela. Do you know what I do now? Because there are also times I lose my mind. Remember, now we've become parents and teachers and nurturers all at the same time, full time. We've, we're yeah. so used to outsourcing this stuff and suddenly it's all on you. So you know yeah. what I do? Because for every, every five seconds, I swear I hear my name. I lock myself in the bathroom, friend. I lock myself in the bathroom. I put bath salts, I put music and I put candles and I sit in there and I probably have to put more warm water at least three times because I refuse to get out of there until I feel like I'm breathing again. Because sometimes you realize I haven't been breathing. I've been busy putting out fires, carrying this one, worrying about where that one must go and planning the next salary because now I am thin on my saved up salary. You know what I mean? Like, I'm so grateful that we are freelancers. I always say this time has been a good time of freelancers who know that we always plan ahead. We always assume we won't be employed for at least yeah. another three months. Yeah. But when you see that being thin without any prospect of where your next one's going to come from, it's a really scary time and you need to plan. Because also, I suppose, you know, some couples, you know, you've got the corporate one who's got the, you know, the safety of, of, of the, the 25th of the month. There's a salary that comes in. Mm. But you and Paul, you guys are both freelancers, you know. Mm. So it's easy for you guys to start playing the blame game when it comes to finances. Mm. Uh, but when I look at you guys, you guys, you know, th th that's not your vibe. Do you feel like because even before COVID happened, you had solidified the foundation of how your finances work, it kind of helped you when we went into turmoil? Yeah, you know, uh, to quote my husband, he was like, listen, finances are like exes, declare, declare, declare. If there's one crazy one who's going to rear the ugly head, you must declare so that it's not a surprise when you're walking in the mall and Katlapu, there's an ex. So we, we were very clear with each other's finances and to the point where we would even be able to go to the other one. I think for this one, get a payment holiday. Not because we can't pay it, but it's going to help us to have surplus you know, and we'll come okay. see it when we come back. And so, yes, it's, it's really been, you must live financially consciously. You know, if there's one thing about us women is I know we're very good at making a plan and having your little nest eggs uh, and whatever. Uh -huh. um, and I, I feel like, yeah, this is the time where we're proving why we are 
we are the queens we are <laughs> because we get very clever with the money um yeah you, can i tell you during COVID, i didn't even want to be called a queen i was like i'm not a queen i'm a peasant i don't know how to do it <laughs> you know I, I don't want to be a, take your crown i'm like it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, keep it keep it I, I just also want to get taken care of like i'm yes like, you know, I feel like a food factory. I feel like a mommy factory. I just feel yes. like I must always be like churning something out to make somebody else feel good. I was like, ah, I'm not a queen. I'm a peasant. Now, mm. please, you know, take care of me. I just give me. Don't come back pregnant, ne? Friendship. Friendship. Listen, <laughs> if you didn't know how expensive children are, COVID taught you. Trust me, the eggs hurt me. The eggs were like, comrades, we are with you. We will stop these things. I think I was five too. <laughs> No, no, because I know your man, girl. <laughs> he is always on the job. <laughs> Viva Ghana. <laughs> hey, okay. you, you know, you said up in South Africa, bottom house, Ghana. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's on the job. <laughs> he's on the JLB. <laughs> okay, Jimmy, stick around. Uh, I'm going to call you back. Uh, let me go to Ziggles from Book Club. Um, the reason also, out of the fact that they're absolutely wonderful mothers, so I wanted to know how they cope during COVID-19, it's because they're all kind in, when you look at the spectrum of work uh, and jobs of where they were. Inside lockdown, Rose was looking for a job. Violet had just started a new job and Matata took herself off the corporate grid long ago. She was just like, that's it. I'm going to go out and do my own thing. So I just want to also like figure out, you know, inside that COVID-19 being mothers and having the different, uh, you know, umbrellas of employment. How did it affect them? Welcome, Matate. Welcome, Violet. Welcome, Rose. Please unmute yourself, ladies. <laughs> hey. hey. Hello. Hello. Okay, so just ah. ask somebody like that too. I, I just have <laughs> wine, like just drinking, because <laughs> that's how we usually do it. Matasha, I'll go to you first. What expectations did you have to rid yourself of uh, as soon as you realized, okay, we're in a pandemic. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to last. I have no certainties in life, but, you know, so I'm going to give myself a break on this thing. You mean regarding parenting specifically? Yes, yeah, parenting specifically. Oh gosh. Um, well, I'm I'm a I'm a pretty relaxed parent in general. I I I rely a lot on my intuition. Mm -hmm. I'm not the kind of parent that reads a lot on parenting and consults my pediatrician a lot. Um, I I go a lot on intuition and. I'm lucky enough that during this whole time, during this pandemic, I'm, I'm staying with my mom. So I'm with my two children and we're staying in my mother's house in East London, uh, just outside of the city. Uh, beach is just a few meters down the road. It's free, you know, it's just open air. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's quiet. Um, so I've been very relaxed. I think actually I'm, I'm astonished at how comfortable I've been during this, this lockdown. I am just one of those people who has no complaints. I am very comfortable. I have absolutely no stress. I have um, tuned out of Joburg. I've tuned out of news. Um, I just sit, I open my laptop in the mornings. I do what I need to do for my, <laughs> for my work. Mm. I submit it. I, meet my deadlines and then I get back to attending um, life with my kids. Life has just been really all over the place, free for all in our house because my husband's not here with us. So I don't have to be a wife during this time, which is quite nice. <laughs> I'm strictly a mother. <laughs> Guys, it's like, it gives me a lot of free time. It gives me a lot of alone time too. So I'm really, really appreciating that. Um, I'm just relaxed about things like diet and um, a bedtime, especially bedtime has kind of gone out the window. They're back at school now, thankfully, but, mm. but especially in the beginning, those things I didn't stress too much about, I did make sure that the, they were sleeping enough. So it was kind of like, I don't really care what time you go to bed, but you will get 10 hours of sleep each night, you know? Mm. Um, diet wise as well, mm. I was kind of relaxed. Uh, I'm coming back slowly. You know, because I'm so glad you said that about, you know, allowing them to sleep because, you know, there was a point where the kids were sleeping like at two in the morning, three, and then waking up at two in the afternoon. And I kind of felt like, 
you know when you know when the, the sun is you know is, is is having its swan song right and it's out and your kids are sleeping you walk into the room it's dark i actually felt like a bad mother like i'm allowing lazy plates right when you <laughs> when you talked about when you talked about walking in on i like it the one at like 3 a.m looking like a zombie still watching his game that's happened with zim that's happened with my kid and it makes you feel like a terrible mom you yeah. actually get angry you're like go to bed <laughs> That's what people say, know. you know, yeah. but you, yeah. you're so right that if they sleep at four in the morning, it means they must wake up at four in the afternoon. You, they must so they sleep say. 10 hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, Violet, uh, coming to you, what, what expectations did you just drop immediately so that you can, you know, you know, some people require a payment holiday from the bank for cars and houses and debt. What payment holiday did you give your, your, your mental state because of COVID-19? Um, I think it was... It was weird because in trying to give myself a break, I realized that all of a sudden I built up so much more anxiety. So I was like, because <laughs> I've got to figure out how this thing is going to work. So very sort of a month and a bit into it, I realized uh -uh, I'm struggling and this is going to make everyone else struggle. Um, and also the, the adjustment of being at home. It's not something I'm used to but it's something that my partner's used to because he works for himself. But so that was a big deal and not being, and, and really trying to say to myself, I, I can't like be at your beck and call because I'm at the office, I'm at work, I'm sitting in front of my desk. And then yeah. really eventually it was just like, you know what? Every single one of us goes, Oh, I wish I could be at home with my kids and instead of going to work and all of that. And I was like, here it is. Here it is. Let me give my child that time. Let me give myself that time to actually have more time to hang out with her and just have different and, and, and just get to have what she has with her dad. You know, there's like a bit of like, ah, you know so much. You get to see all the stuff that I don't get to because I get in the car and drive to Rosebank every day. But now I'm here and I really just like, I had to let that go. That, that full time, like, I am at work thing had to yeah. stop and go, you know what? I'm at home and I'm also at work and it's two things and I've got to figure both of those out. And now you've got one child, right? So, yeah. and, and it's, and it's, it's always like, I know, and you know what it is, as friends, <laughs> when, when, when we hang out with our mothers or, uh, you know, the higher, the older generation, they're always on your case about, you know, you have to have a second child, you have to have a second child. And I'm going to speak to Rose just now because she knows the second child chant in her household very well. But obviously, please tell me, at least once during COVID, when your child Samora, by herself, you guys are locked down and you just wish you'd given her a friend. Did you ever wish like, damn it, I should have just had that second child so she can just yeah. be by herself? No, babes, no. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Um, absolutely not my mother said it <laughs> my grandmother said it uh, but no um, no guys I, I, all I can offer the world is one child here, and she's amazing you know she's amazing and that's all I got to offer more than that is, is, is just like self like no no <laughs> did you not feel like she's lonely during, during the lockdown she's, she's wasted she's absolutely wasted and as a result at some point she got really frustrated um, and, she, cause, and, and for her it was like, I'm just seeing you, you and daddy all the time. And mm -hmm. she was so frustrated that she refused having like, um, she'd have regular weekly play dates or conversations with my mom every day on video call. And there was just like a day, she was just like, I don't want to see everybody. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to see everyone on video. I want to see everybody face to face. She's just like, she, she lost it. And as a result, my mom was like, you know what? I've gone back to work somewhat. I've had the COVID test bring her. And my mom is with my grandmother out in Limpopo. So it's, it just was a whole thing for her because then it's open land. She can play in this sort of mini village scenario and just yeah. be comfortable. And I remember my grandmother calling me and said, ha, what kind of child is this that can sit and play by herself for 14 hours? I said, one, that's an only child and go stay that way. <laughs> 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 so it's she's figures it out she she kind of bless her she really does entertain herself and she has mentioned that we've had the conversation about the fact that we're not we're like we're not trying to have any more people in the house uh right. and she kind of gets it and she also is very close with her cousins you know very very close they play mm. all sorts of games on video on zoom calls the floor is lava in my house things are oh. like that we jumped on the, the whole thing and you know so yeah figured it out you 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 had just started a new job before COVID 19 started. it was a couple of months into a new job yeah. 
COVID started. So when you know you 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 reading in the newspapers, you watching it happen. People are getting retrenched. People are losing jobs. Companies are folding. I mean, don't you like you do the match? Like I I was the last one in here. Last, <laughs> one, in here. last one and first one out. Um, yeah, a little bit of that happened. Um, but you know, I sort of work a lot in the. NGO space and my my job is to also fundraise for this organization to exist. So there's that pressure where you know you you do know that your job spec when you sign on the dotted lines, your part of your job is to make sure there's income because that yeah. income or those funds you get in then are able to support your colleagues and allow for them to have jobs. Yeah. So that was a bit of a scary thing. Uh, but I think just sort of how the cosmos works and how all of that happened and that there was all of a sudden there was COVID and all these major international donors and funders had um, oh. some money, <clears throat> excuse me. Mm. And, um, and so we, the, all of a sudden the, the access to resources became wider. And mm. so just had to work a hell of a lot more to try and get a hold of that money, which we really did very, very well in like the short space of time. So after all of that happened and kind of looking at the books and where we are, I went, Phew, okay. But it was a massive, I think that was part of that anxiety in the beginning to realize yeah. that the responsibility of my colleagues and the rest of the people I work with depends on me trying to secure some of these funds and making sure that we all can have our jobs and our normalness. And, you know, it, and I mean, like this NGO I work with, it's in the space of the arts, which is probably been the worst hit. With the worst COVID. hit. The worst hit, bruh. The worst yeah. hit. And, and so before I, I pull Rose in here, what, what, what changes uh, did you experience and implement in COVID that... You know, obviously you were doing it because we were under distress, and but when you look at it, it worked for your family and you'd like to continue doing it. And the things I want to keep going is to just make more time for everyone. Mm. Um, yeah, it's just like, stop, don't fret the small stuff. And I mean, I really, you know, you guys know, I'm generally quite relaxed. Like, we don't have a television in my house. We read books, we're watching, we, there's no screen time during the week. It's two hours on the weekend. It's all that weirdness. And we try, but it's like knowing that you can actually make t- more time to do other stuff and any opportunity to connect. I think that like that, that consistent connection for myself with the girls or my daughter with her friends is vital. Um, mm-hmm. All of us, it took, the, it took COVID to appreciate that distance can be cut down, um, can be cut down with a Zoom call. Like, that's all, you know, it's, it's kind of like to be consistent with these calls. We need to keep the connections with family, with friends, with kids. It's okay for our kids to kind of have that technique. So that whole place of being able to talk to each other and spend more time together is definitely something I'm going to try and keep going in a real <laughs> Oh, thanks so much. Now, we got introduced to Violet via Rose because Rose's husband, very good friends with Violet. This is how it went down. So now, Rose, I mean, you are, like I said, you're very planned, you're very meticulous, and you're very intentional, right, about everything that you do. Did that come under attack under a lockdown? Yes and no. So in the beginning, it served me well because, um, and also the school was very helpful. So they had a weekly um, theme and all you needed to do was just like um, 30 minutes every day with the teacher on Zoom. And then, um, and then what I did is then I took the weekly theme and I did all this arts and craft around this weekly theme. And that was great because it helped to, the kind of the kids, they don't really feel like, like something has changed, you know? I just told them that, you know, you know, people are getting sick, so we have to stay home because this is virus, right? Yeah. Um, which was fine. And then I think towards, you know, it was like, oh, okay, fine, we're going into lockdown until for a month or whatever the initial 21 days was. And then that got extended, but then, and then that got extended. So then yeah. I was like, and then I just, I think I just got, it just became too much. Like we couldn't do like arts and craft, like three arts, day have a morning routine and afternoon routine then it just became like free play wake up um you know we'll try and do school not every day some days and then it's just like survival mode so i think that's you know um in the beginning it helped to kind of ease them into and also as i relax the the schedule or try to keep them to what they were doing at school um then also some of the restrictions kind of eased up, you know, then my mom could come visit, my sister could come visit. So I think for them was just um, having, 
having that initial state of like, okay, things are not normal, but things seemed normal. And then afterwards I was like, I can't, I mean, I, I did everything. Like I became a baker. Um, I was always a cook, but like the one time we did, like, I think we painted three times in one day <laughs> and the third time it landed on the wall. And then I was just like, this is too much, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it, it, yeah, it worked both ways, but yeah. I was I was watching this one um this one talk on YouTube with this uh, psychologist lady uh, speaking about parenting during COVID, and she said you know if you can tell yourself one thing uh, as a parent during COVID is that now is not the time to try become the perfect parent. Well, it's never a good time to try be a perfect parent, but now is not the time, right? Uh, and I see Matasha is nodding, so I'm gonna come I'm gonna come back to her. So Rose, is that something that you kind of stepped into where you kind of gave yourself a break and then be like, you know what, Rose? you didn't start COVID, you're not Wuhan, uh, you know, this is none of your fault, so give yourself a break. Absolutely. I mean, it was survival mode for everyone, right? And mm -hmm. in survival mode, there's no, like, um, you know, you don't get the luxury of being, being structured and having things in this particular way. So for me, it was just like, I just, my, all I want to do today is make the kids feel comfortable and I must just be relaxed because I can't make the kids feel comfortable if I'm not relaxed. So I think that was the, the everyday process, you know? And I think, you know, when winter kicked in, it, the only thing that I had to do was manage the, you, you guys need to go outside. You guys need to step outside and be outside for at least, an, you know, an hour and a half in the morning or an hour in the morning, an hour and a half in the afternoon or something around that, you know? Because the screen time became a bit problematic in my house. Yeah. Um, I think purely because my daughter who's five, Zaria, she, she can watch TV all day if we allow her, right? And my son always wanted to be outside. So it was that balance of, you know, kind of putting them, sort of using each other to kind of um, get them to do, to kind of have a sort of a bit of a balance, you know? And when you said, when Violet, when you asked Violet if um, she wished she had a second child um, during COVID, I wish I only had one child during COVID. Yeah. <laughs> because they fought, they, like everything was a fight, everything. Like I even like ended up buying identical um, everything because it wasn't like, you know, like Piano had his toys that he liked and then they sort of like, there was fight over stupid things. I mean, the one day it was a fight over a stapler for like over 30 minutes. <laughs> and I literally just took out all the staples and I'm just like, take it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think, I, I don't know. I think it, in the beginning, it was really tough with um, two kids. I would have loved one kid <laughs> or possibly you no know, kid. <laughs> now I was thinking it's so much easier for you because at least they keep no. them going. It's easy it's for easier me. now. I think it's I think it's a personality thing. I think it depends on what kind of kids you have, right? So I have two kids who've never fought a day in their lives because my older Zim is such an evolved little child. She, he's a little old man. He doesn't fight with anybody. So Lima to him is no one to fight or argue with. So they've never been in a fight. That they don't make each other cry. And sometimes I have to invite them into my room for snuggles because they're just off doing their own thing. And I'm just like, wow, I miss the babies. Where are the babies? So I do. I think it's probably more of a personality. Some kids can completely roll on their own. Others, you know. Yeah. And the age gap. What? What's the age gap? I'm saying, and the age gap. Between Zara and Keanu, it's, it, yeah. Um, yeah, Matata is three years, and then I'm like, what, almost two years. Yeah, so man. it was just like, I don't know, I felt like Zaria felt, the oldest one felt like, I, I want the attention that the younger one is getting. And they yeah. would just fight over everything. Um, yeah, so it took us a bit like two months to get them into like, and it's weird because they always shared and they never used to fight. But I think it's also the not seeing friends, not being outside the house, um, mm. you know, and then just having each other. Um, and then the younger one dropped the naps completely because naps were, you know, kind of forced at school. Um, so there was this like afternoon hysteria that I had to deal with for like, a month and a bit, you know, in the beginning. And then also my husband was working. So it was also the trying to get all, everyone in the house comfortable, but also he's working. So I need to make sure that they're not like distracting him too much. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then also at the same time, he would be like, no, I want to spend some time with the kids, you know? 
and then it would be like spending time with the kids and then kind of rushing back in between calls and meetings and all of that. But yeah, I think oh, it was a bit chaotic. I think no but kids would have been great. <laughs> You were you you were uh, you were one of and and kudos to you. You're one of the few people I know who landed a job during COVID, by the way. So you know, kudos to you, madam. <laughs> but also, like you were job hunting for a greater part of lockdown. Do you not think like you know quietly there was an anxiety, there was like a little bit of panic that you were emitting, because I think like kids are such energy creatures as well. They just pick up on your mm -hmm. energy. So do you not like do, do you not think that like they were picking up on that anxiety that you like I have to find a job. Yes, absolutely. And when you're reading everything, you're hearing all the stats, you're hearing the retrenchments, you're hearing the unknown state, um, you know, you, you kind of have to keep yourself um, energized in terms of that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, there's something that's around the corner, I'm going to find something that I want. And then it was like, and my husband kept on saying to me that don't, don't become desperate. Don't just settle for anything. You know, it must be the opportunity you want. Because I'm like, ah, oh, right now, I'll just I'll, I'll settle for like, I'll settle for the 25th of the month, you know? Um, and then, it, so it, it was kind of tough. And then it was just, and then at some point I was just like, it's not just me. It's the entire world that's going through this, you know? So um, the job market was just awful everywhere. It had nothing to do with what industry you're in, what skill set you have, the experience yeah. you have. It was yeah. just, it just literally shut down. And it shut down at the time when, um, you know, because it was part of it was kind of like a planned break. And then the other part was like, okay, but I need to get back by this time. And when yeah. this time hit was when lockdown hit. Um, so it was, it was the sense of, and I think to some, I mean, in the beginning, it was just a case of, um, using this everyone is at home i'm trying to keep everyone happy to distract me from the um you know career opportunity stuff yeah. um, and then at some and then and then towards the like yeah and then sort of like a month or two in is like but this is not stopping i think the problem is that in the beginning everyone thought covid had like a time frame and everyone was like worst case scenario three time, months. Yeah. and then it wasn't it hasn't been and it's still even now like close to seven months um it's still so like okay. uncertain we don't i mean we know more but we still don't have like timelines there's no timelines so everything is just you'll see <laughs> so i think the one thing we know we don't we're not speaking about as women around like you know just the the pressure that you know COVID 19 brought and just this year in itself 2020 is outside of yes being a parent and looking after kids and making sure that you know they come out of this unscathed is the changes that our bodies went through. And I'm not talking about weight gain. I feel like everybody got weight gain, but a friend of mine yesterday was showing me that she, she didn't even pick up weight, but she just got stretch marks in places that she just never you know, thought it was possible to get stretch marks. And you know, I, I, I'm, like, I'm not a person with like a, a, like a bust, but I just, and I remember I was telling you guys on the Zoom call one day, like, I just have like these gadongas out of nowhere. And I was just like, is this where I'm carrying my stress? Is this like, that does my body know something? Am I going to have to use them as flotation devices because, you know, there's water that's about, you know, really? I was just like, well, <laughs> so like, Matati, I'll come to you, then I'll go to Violet, then do me and make my way around again. D did your body betray you during lockdown? <laughs> I just put on weight. I just put on weight. I didn't have anything. I didn't have anything mysterious happening. It was all very explained. I was eating a lot of baked goods and I put on weight. And as a result, I need new bras and panties like nothing. I had to go underwear shopping all over again. And yeah, I just that's it. That's that's really the main change that that I oh, and I'm growing my hair. I decided, fuck it, I'm growing my hair again. Yeah. So those are the only two major changes that happened. Yeah. Violet? Um I think it's more like health health related stuff. Um my hair's like my hair's just like decided it's like this is it. I'm not going up. I'm like this is what's happening. I'm not growing any longer. No, oh, no, it's just decided like it's finished now. I like need beach to get humidity going. Yeah. Um, and then, then unfortunately, like I'm actually in recovery mode. I had like a wonderful asthma attack in between the madness. Oh. Um, it's you know so and and I mean the the seasonal changes doesn't doesn't help much. But that's mm -hmm. pretty much what it is in terms of weight gain, which is the obvious. Yeah, I've, I've okay, this is something that's been happening with the weight thing. All of a sudden, I've like naturally snapped into like intermittent fasting mode, mm -hmm. which has been a little bit on the strange side. So my body's just all by itself decided that 
like I cannot eat until like two, three o'clock in the afternoon. I'll be fine until I start to feel a bit dizzy. Then it's time for something to eat, you know? So yeah, but other than those things, that's really, it's, that's really been all of it. But yeah, yeah, it's just, I just really would like some more hair growth. <laughs> that would be nice. Pat, I see you want to jump in? Sorry, this actually is a big change that happened, Anel, and it's weird that I forgot because I was telling you guys on the WhatsApp group just this morning. Um, my gut health is suffering. And, and it's so interesting because I was chatting to my mom this morning and I was saying to her, do you know, I know that you are anxious and I know that you've given me anxiety, but do you know that especially as women, we actually store our anxiety physically in our bodies. And I said to her, where do you think you store yours? Cause I know mine's in the gut. And she was like, oh, it's definitely in the gut. And she says, oh, and then I was explaining to her what I'm feeling. She says, oh my gosh, you've just described me. That's my entire adulthood. And my mom's entire adulthood is just trauma. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of uh, nonsense that she had to go through as, a, as a, an apartheid politician's wife and being tortured in prison and all of those things. So she's like, my life as an adult is kind of stored in my stomach and my, my bowel health has never been regular or healthy or it's just a, it's an issue. And I've found during this lockdown, I've been having a lot of, of bowel issues as well. It's so amazing that your mom is still around so you can ask her those questions though. Because Girl, it's, like, it's such a blessing. She's telling me so, she's explaining so many things about my life. <laughs> it's amazing, it's amazing. I, I, I feel like I, I'm I, reparenting myself through her and my kids, like watching her with my children. I feel like I'm reliving my childhood and I get to reparent myself and kind of, I don't know, it's strange. It's very bizarre yeah. what's happening in this house, but I'm loving it. So wow. yeah, lots of healing happening here. You mean, so I'm like, so for me, my body, I was like, I've got like this beard now all of, and I, I never had face hair. Like and I said, but I mean, now I like it when I'm thinking I just rub on it. I'm like, hmm, you know, but like, it's a body change. Did, did, did your body change in any way, Dooms? Um, I've, I've developed migraines, guys. Like, it's a whole new thing. I've developed migraines. I've never had migraines to the point where I had to have it, have it medicated. I'm talking migraines to where I've had to be in the dark, find the darkest room in the house and stay in there. I've seen a doctor and now with putting me on preventative medicine and I hate medicine. I'm always looking for natural remedies. So, yeah. so that's been the thing. And it seems to be a hormonal thing. So now I'm trying to work on my hormones because I don't know what this lockdown has done to my hormones. Yeah. Um, but I think it's the stress of, um, I had to put my kids on, on mild anti, uh, not, not anti, uh, you know, anxiety meds. I had to yes. put my, uh, my kids on anxiety meds because they were also having nightmares. And from that point, I remember that's when my migraine started. And I think it's because I started going, what's going on with my children. When you're a person who has a mental history, I should have mental issues. And then you think now your children are going to go through that. It's such a scary thing. And I think it just, everything went haywire. So yeah, I'm really hoping to get out of this migraine phase though, because they are horrendous, horrendous. Sorry, man. Inga, put your, your unmute yourself. There you go. Your body, did anything change about it during lockdown? Uh, not exactly. We changed it when, 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 Ingati ni lambila, nko shono ba ni lambila na Kwa ifa njanga, so wama la langezi tulu nge fridge Ndiwa sila la panzi, nzo ba tizi, ndi boni zi, ndo zi msope Funeka ndiche ngogo, alamzo zi, ndi zi, ndi ingati ni lambila Ndiwa ba nifume ni amanzi, mfe nunga la manzi ndiche fast Sure Rose, did your body betray you in any way? Were you like, what is this? Are you my evil Well, I ended up in hospital in April during the lockdown Because I had an abscess in my armpit which was then discovered to be stress related. And, um, and thankfully it was the beginning of, it was early April, the first, remember it was a week before my birthday. Um, yeah. The first week of April. And I didn't, and I think, you know, sometimes when you, when you wanna like coping mechanism, you tell yourself you're okay mentally, right? But then if your body is in um, stress mode, um, then it shows. So I get to the hospital and at first I have this like, this little bump in my armpit, then it grows into this thing that's like the size bigger than a five brand. 
see, if, I think Matatu even asked, and everyone asked me, what's the cause of it? Like, what caused it? Um, and then I asked the doctors, and they were like, no, it's stress related. And I've never had any of that before. Um, and then I realized that the, the sort of stress of the last month and a half, because that's when it happened, you know, just from, well, it wasn't even a month and a half, it was like three weeks. Um, and I think it was that initial stage where everyone is just, is still figuring it out, like how are we going to do this lockdown thing? Um, is it, is it um, you know, and everyone was starting to see the cracks in whatever the environment was and oh kids and kids, yeah, so all of that. So I think that was, that happened. And then after that, I just decided that, you know what, um, yoga's always worked for me. So um, I, I just used a yoga app and I literally yogured out the stress. So, the agreement and you know with everyone at home was that guys you need to leave me alone for an hour and it's usually right. in the morning right. um sometime before 11 um and i did it i mean i think the one the one month i think it was may i did a class six times a week for an hour oh, um which i suppose helped because um well, I wouldn't say there was no weight gain, but it certainly reduced it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, so that also came in handy. But no, I think for me, it was just like I needed, I needed something to just breathe, like just be in a space where I was breathing and, and at alone time. Because also, when you have kids and you're in lockdown, when do you get alone time? And like Dumi was saying that you have to then, you know, go and lock yourself somewhere. Yeah, um, yeah so that was, that was my, my thing. And I think with that, it helped with the stress of, anxiety of not knowing a whole lot of things but at the same time i just kind of got into an alone routine you know um and because some days it was like really warm in the morning i'd even do the yoga outside um so yeah it was just daily yoga outside to kind of stabilize things um yeah and then i mean after that that um hospital visit i think it forced me to say if you keep telling yourself you're not stressed but your body showing you that you're stressed, then you are stressed. Yeah. And I think that's what yeah. we do, especially as women, we just keep telling ourselves that I've got this, it's okay. You know, um, everyone can have a breakdown, but me, everyone can have a, a transition moment to get how they're gonna cope with COVID, but me, you know, mm -hmm. we got this, I got this, I got this. And then my body's like, no, you don't got you this. Don't got this. <laughs> so that's what so happened. <laughs> We've reached the end of our hour. I can't believe it went by so quickly. But basically, I, I feel like, you know, picking your brains and getting into your lives, uh, all of you guys, there's, there's been one common thread. It's that hour a day that you need to take for yourself. You know, uh, it, it, and it's, it, it all comes down to your support structure, you know, just having a team that even in the 23 hours, because also, you know, the clocks were just shifted. They were put on their heads when it came to this lockdown and parenting and COVID-19. But everyone, Tash, you spoke about it, like time to yourself, Rose, time to yourself, Violet, you were saying, you know, with you being at home and usually at work the whole time, you just have to like in that space, find an hour to yourself. To me in West Virginia, in America, you out there looking for time to yourself. Now I inga you know, attention, won't get back to Funa all the time, but you must just have time to yourself. So I really think the message that you ladies have given everybody uh, who tuned in today is that you must simply just give yourself time, just one hour a day. Tad? That's amazing. And can I also just say, there was a week during lockdown where Dumi's movie was just on repeat at my oh. house. That was my me time. <laughs> <laughs> you killed us! <laughs> Seriously, single was the I best. Repeat. <laughs> best, best. <laughs> Thank you. I've watched it more than once. You have watched it three times, and I'm going back for more. Like I know, I think I might go again tonight. <laughs> My son is cracking upside down, and he calls it being nummy. I'm finished. <laughs> Uh, ladies, thank you so much. It was wonderful. Inga, strength thank to you. you. Thank you for your honesty, thank Inga. You. Thank you. Thank you for your time to me. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, Violet. Thank you, 947. Thank you. And obviously, first woman, thank you. Like, these conversations have to happen on the regular. And I'm so glad that, you know, you got us to just, like, just chat. Just talk about it. Ladies, uh, you can go and treat yourself. Your hour starts now. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>